Alright, so in this video I want to simply have a discussion with you guys, just like I did last time, except for not as much of a serious subject as it was last time, if the video actually stayed up. If it didn't, well, this is going to be awkward, because I'm recording this video while the other one's uploading. So let's get started. So, I recently finished playing Black Ops 3, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and I want to slap a huge spoiler warning right here for you guys. Uh, this, this video does have a lot of spoilers. Um, so, if you are sensitive to that kind of stuff, then I guess don't watch this video. But in the case that you don't really care or don't really want to get your panties in a knot about the truth of my opinions about it, let's go ahead and get started. So the whole thing about uh, Black Ops 3 is that it's a little confusing as you're going through it because you as the player, you aren't really a passionate character, like you aren't passionate about yourself like you used to be. Like in Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2 you were Woods and Mason and uh, Section. You had characters. Like you were given a name, you were given a position in that character and that was that. So it was really weird when everything kind of just ended and granted at the end of the game everyone but player dies and you are left with your suit rebooting and once you exit the building your suit reboots and the soldier who walks up to you says what is your name and you simply reply with Taylor now, again, if you haven't played the game, I'm going to do a very horrible job of explaining this, so play the game. Um, the single player campaign actually is worth the time. Um, I wish that they would have just sold me the single player instead of the multiplayer, because I really suck at multiplayer. But anyway, John Taylor is a main character, and if you've ever watched um, Special Victims Unit Law and Order, or Law and Order SVU Spect Special Victims Unit, anyway. Um, if you watch that, um, you understand who he is, um, because it's the same actor. Um, except for, obviously, there's different things going on. Like, it's not him investigating rape cases. No, he is, like, one of the first augmented soldiers with full robotic ar armor, like, armor for his arms. Um, and his legs, as well as some parts of his organs. That being said, however, the, the position that he plays is kind of like a father figure role for the player. And this can be kind of determined as uh, how that is because of how the player interacts with him and how she kind of leans on him. She or he, I guess I should say. I played as a girl because I thought that actually mattered. It doesn't. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of the gist. He's kind of like your father figure. He's um, your superior officer, and he soon becomes your XO throughout the game. Um, but he's actually not your XO. Because here's a news flash. You died. Yep, that's right. After the mission, after the first, sorry, the first two missions, um, which is you as a human and you going through the training scenarios with uh, Taylor's team, you died. Surgery failed, you're dead. Like, you are dead, dead. Like, clinically dead. So, 
why does the game continue? Well, in a nutshell, Taylor wants to give you one last dream before you go. So he uploads his memories of what happened to a separate team, and I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to link the Reddit post down below that kind of explains all of this. Um, but essentially, you're dead, he uploads his memories to you, and that's it. But here's the thing that I don't like. That Activision and Treyarch, most, mostly Treyarch, took the cheap route and went with the Dream Theory. I absolutely hate the Dream Theory. Now here's why. The Dream Theory is lazy as all hell. It's essentially just like saying, oh, the campaign's there because some people will want it, but everyone's here for the multiplayer and the zombies, which is true. Most people do go and grab a Call of Duty game for multiplayer and zombies in the case that it has it. If it doesn't have it, then it's just multiplayer. I suck at multiplayer in most games, so I always go for the story. Now I can tell you, paying 40 some dollars for a game probably was not the best idea, but seeing how you know, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 is still on sale for 60 bucks, and it was released in 2012. That's a thing. Um, but the fact is that I never really liked Call of Duty. Like, I'm going to come right out and say it. I never liked Call of Duty. I hardly ever played it. The last one that I actually played and got into was uh, Modern Warfare 3, which everyone else hated. Um, multiplayer was great for that. I actually did well. Um, and that was before I found PC. So, that was the last one that I actually played played through. I mean, I played a little bit of Ghosts, which sucked. Um, played a little bit of Advanced Warfare, which sucked. Um, and I played a little bit of Black Ops 2, but not much. I really wasn't a Black Ops or Call, Call of Duty fan anyway. I was always hardcore Halo fan. Now, take that as you will. I don't care how you take that. But the fact is... As a Halo fan, going into this, I did enjoy the story thoroughly. I was very confused at the end, and it seemed like it, the story, even though it lasted me, personally, and that was with several deaths, um, and getting back to the point that I, where I died, um, if you cut out all the deaths and make it pretty much a seamless run, it took me about 8 to 10 hours to play through the game, and that was also looking a little bit for the various items that you can collect throughout the game, as Call of Duty is known for its collectibles that tell additional bits of the story. But the sad fact was, I never really cared about any of the characters. Like, sure, I cared about... Um, uh, I cared about Taylor because he was Taylor. Like, he was the guy from Law and & Order. And it was weird because it's kind of in the Uncanny Valley a little bit because the face meshes are really weird. Um, but another character that I liked was the main psychologist that survived at the end. I don't even know his name. But he was the doctor from Star Trek. The hologram. Doctor. Like, um... I mean, it's Robert Picardo. Like, the legend. They got him to do, like, seven lines. And that was fucking cool. Like, being able to sit down and say, Oh my god, I know this person. Because I sat through all eight seasons of Star Trek Voyager. I loved Star Trek Voyager. I loved the Doctor. He was one of my favorite characters. He developed his personality over the time. 
and then they cancel the series, but that's for another video. Um, but the dream theory, back to that. I don't accept it. Like, it, it acted like they had, like, a few months to build a game, and they already had spent years on building multiplayer. I mean, granted, the story was good, except for the goddamn scenes where you go through and all that the all that your character would say is um, the shit about the white forest or the frozen forest or whatever. Listen only to the sound of my voice. Let your mind relax. Let your thoughts drift. Let the bad memories fade. Let peace be upon you. Surrender yourself to your dreams. Let them wash over you like the gentle waves of the bluest ocean. Let them envelop you, comfort you. Imagine somewhere calm. Imagine somewhere safe. Imagine yourself in a frozen forest. You're standing in a clearing. The trees around you so tall they touch the sky. Pure white snowflakes fall all around. You can feel them melt on your skin. You are not cold. It cannot overcome the warmth of your beating heart. Can you hear it? You only have to listen. Do you hear it slowing? You are slowing it. You are in control. Calm. At peace. I hated that shit. That was the most boring, asinine shit I've ever heard. But, all that aside, I can go for an hour of what I hate and what I don't and what I love about the game. But the sad fact is, it just seems like an afterthought. And it's just like, sure, it's cute, it's funny, but... Come on. You are developing a triple-A title that most are going just for the multiplayer. I mean, I've seen people who have hundreds of hours already sunk into it, and they may have, like, rank two or three in the campaign. Which means that they may have completed the first three or four missions. So, when it comes down to it, video game companies need to stop relying on just because most of their demographic plays multiplayer. Stop doing that shit. I don't just play multiplayer, and neither does a lot of people. I mean, I know quite a few people that go and actually play the game for the game. So, I don't know what you gotta do, Treyarch, or whatever. And honestly, if they make me pay for a DLC just to get the rest of the game, I'm gonna be pissed. Because, frankly, I'm saving up mon my money for uh, No Man's Sky, which gameplay will come out the day that it's released. 
if it's released a day early for pre-orders, I will start recording and release the day. Um, hell, I may just randomly start streaming. You you probably won't know. Um, but I will be playing No Man's Sky. No matter what I have to cut out of my life, I will be playing No Man's Sky. But the point is, um, that it's not fair to us players who actually go for the single player experience. Which, granted, we are far and few between. Um, but the dream theory is bullshit. I want an actual game, so I don't care if you give me a free DLC that expands the story, or what, but I want an actual story. I don't care how you deliver, but Treyarch, I want an actual story. So if Treyarch actually ever listens to this or ever watches it, I want more story. So, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Um, if you didn't, give it a big ol' thumbs down, tell me why in the comments below. And while you're down there, uh, tell me what else you want to see, if you, if you agree or disagree with me. Um, tell me your thoughts, um, I'm very active in my comments section. Um, also, no spam please. Like, seriously, no spam. I'm really getting sick of deleting videos. I mean, comments. Because it's really getting on my nerves. Because I want my comments to be very clean and very professional. But also very fun at the same time. So, please, if you do advertise, know that I will mark it as spam and block you from showing anything in my channel again. So, that's flat out what I'm going to tell you. Um, but... Besides that, um, I just kind of wanted to get this off my chest. So, uh, if you ever want to subscribe, I do release videos Monday, Thursday, and Friday, and maybe on the weekend. So I at least release four videos a week, um, or three videos a week, guaranteed one video maybe. Or wait, no. Monday, Thursday, Friday, yeah three videos a week, uh, guaranteed and maybe one on the extra for the weekend. I'm not sure. I may get in the habit of actually doing a video for the weekend, um, but I will be doing, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I will be doing a um, video on furries and the truth about furries. So, prepare for that, because that is and my monitor shut off. But anyway, that's that. Uh, can you please shut off? Thank you. So, with all that out of the way, thank you guys for watching if you made it through all the way. If you didn't, well, you wouldn't be sitting here and listening to me do my spiel. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. And yeah. Ways to support me are down in the description. Also, the Reddit post that I talked about. So, yeah. Bye bye! Yeah.